Okay, good morning, friends. Welcome to Calvary Church this morning on Sunday, July 12. We have uh, a few of us here in the sanctuary. There's a few more outside uh, in the lawn uh, under the tent. But of course, many of you are worshiping uh, from home and watching us via YouTube and live stream. You probably realize this, I am not Pastor Mark. Um, I'm certainly not Pastor Heather. Um, Pastor Mark is on vacation this week, and Pastor Heather will be uh, bringing uh, the message to us later uh, today during our service. I'm, call me Pastor Doug. I'm a member here of the Calvary family, and I will be serving as our host for this morning. Uh, we begin our service with these words from Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples, for great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Our community is uh, centered around especially what we do on Sunday morning, but uh, I invite you to hear now and listen to these words from uh, John about other things going on in our community this week. Hey, good morning, church. It's good to be with you uh, wherever, whenever you're watching this, and I'm glad we could be here together again this morning. A couple of announcements I have for you. Uh, one is our connection card, virtual connection card. It, like I've said in the past, it's a link that's on our Facebook page or on our YouTube site. If you just scroll down in the details or go to our website, calvarywy.org, it's right on our main in intro paragraph there. Click on that. We'd love to connect with you or if you prayer requests, that's one way to submit those as well. Uh, another thing is our Proverbs Bible studies have been going on now for a couple weeks. If you're interested or haven't checked that out yet, those are on Thursday. Women uh, on Zoom. All those details are in the bulletin that gets emailed out. It's on our uh, website. You can check that out. Contact Pastor Heather if you have any questions about that. For the men, it's here underneath the coffee spot tent on the front lawn. So bring your own chair. Uh, if if that's comfy for you, to a bag chair, a Bible, a mask to wear. And um, just come at on Thursdays, 9.30 to 10.45, same time for both groups. Um, for men, if you have any questions, contact Jim Hop, and he would love to sort that out with you. So I encourage you to check those out. Another thing is um, we have uh, announcements that play before the service. If you haven't shown up early to the service, I guess, online, uh, it's streaming for an hour at least, usually beforehand, before 10 o'clock. And there's uh, just announcement slides that are playing. So uh, if you are feeling like, man, I just don't know what's going on sometimes, if you just come a little bit earlier and, and you can watch some of those slides, you might hear a few more announcements or see some reminders about different things that are happening. So uh, that's just an encouragement to check that out. We usually play those right after the service too. So stick around a little longer if you don't come early at 10 o'clock right away. Um, check that out. So uh, that's about all I have. And maybe you're wondering where I am. And we're in a back hallway at church. This is a, the back hallway. It's a nook. Um, in the 90s, this actually used to be an, an entryway off the parking lot back in the day. So uh, I thought I'd just stand here uh, this week for somewhat interesting background. Um, who knows where I'll be next week. So I will see you later. I hope you have a great week. See ya. Bye. Your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty, for my soul longs and even faints for you. For here my heart is satisfied within your presence. The shadow of your wings. There is one day in your courts. There is one day in your house. There is one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. There is one day in your courts. There is one day in your house. There is one day in your courts. The thousands elsewhere. Than thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask, and I would 
could see to see your beauty find you in the place your glory even though it's virtually. Uh, thank you for joining us in our first song. That was Better as One Day. All right. Thank you, Elvin and Chuck and Donna, for leading us uh, in that song. I mentioned uh, earlier just some updates on uh, members of our congregation. I mentioned that Pastor Mark and his family will be uh, on vacation uh, this week in the next few weeks, and uh, we really want to pray for them for time away to rest and to um, recharge. I know I served 14 years in parish ministry, and uh, every role has its uh, both joys and challenges, and one of the challenges is just getting away for an extended period of time uh, to, again, recharge the creative juices that allow uh, pastors to continue to teach and to preach and to serve so well. So I especially am grateful that we can offer this to Pastor Mark and his family, and we'll be praying for them today um, as we pray together. Uh, another quick update I learned, uh, so many of you have been praying for Carol Vryhoff. She received a negative COVID test yesterday, which that's a positive thing, and so we're giving thanks with her. It's also her birthday today, so uh, we'll pray for one more a negative test uh, so she can go home. Um, I also learned this morning that Roger Lamer had surgery this week and uh, is recovering. And so just a shout out to Roger and uh, pray for uh, continued recovery for him. Uh, I invite you to join me uh, We're gonna, as we pray together. And I'm going to begin with using words from Psalm 121. Let's pray. We lift our eyes to the mountains or maybe the hills, or the skies, or wherever we are, we look up and we say, where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord, the maker and the creator of heaven and earth. He doesn't let our foot slip. Indeed, he who watches over us will not slumber. He who watches over us will neither slumber nor sleep. We as a church community, as a nation, as a world, continue to follow and to seek and to call out to you, Lord, for healing and for restoration 
and for renewal, for the renewal of all things. We think especially of individuals in our congregation. We pray for Pastor Mark today and uh, for renewal as he is away, for times to recharge and to rest and to hear again your call to, to him and to serve in this capacity. We pray for Carol Vryhoff. We give thanks and we celebrate with her for a negative test um, and for what that means in terms of her road to uh, recovery and restoration and to be able to return home um, to familiar places. And we pray, too, for, for Roger and uh, just ask for continued healing and recovery from his surgery. We pray for healing and restoration and renewal for our whole church family as, in so many ways, we are still a part. Uh, we are grateful that we can worship like this and for the opportunity to be in different places, both here inside the church building, out in the tents outside, but many of us still at home. Um, we pray that you continue to restore and renew us. We pray for healing and for restoration and for renewal for our country, uh, for healing from racial tensions, political tensions. We pray for peace. We pray for justice for those who feel oppressed, who are oppressed. We pray for acceptance and awareness and repentance for those who are oppressing and who are using their privilege to harm or to exclude others. We pray for victims, that they might uh, be able to experience the power to forgive and to show grace, and in the process to shed or to let go of bitterness. We pray for our world, for healing in the midst of a pandemic, for a vaccine soon to prevent further infection, even in this summer as we see numbers continue to rise, that You'll protect us and heal us, restore us, and renew us. We pray for a spirit of cooperation among nations, between governments, across borders, over traditions, and in spite of customs. Father, we live in the assurance and the hope of words Psalm of Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. And it gives us hope and it gives us peace that it doesn't depend on us, but through our faith and through the hope we have in you, we can say with confidence and assurance that our world belongs to God, to you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. There's a couple of other things to be aware of as we continue our worship this morning. We're going to be receiving our offering at this time. Of course, that doesn't mean we're passing the plate like we might do if we're here together, but uh, there are a number of ways that uh, you can continue to give, and I like to say exercise the spiritual muscle of generosity, if that means possibly giving uh, through, your, through your bank or through the web or through some of the options that are listed there. It's a way to be generous and to support the work of Calvary Church and the Kingdom of God all over the world. Our, our ministry of the month for July is Safe Haven Ministries. It's a ministry to support and help those who are fleeing uh, violent relationships and uh, invite you to give to that as well by, by designating specifically um, in your gift that you'd like it to go to that. The last few weeks we've been uh, sending out on Thursdays kids notes. Uh, there's an example of that uh, on the screen right now. Kids notes. Someone said to me, these are cool hipster fun ways for kids of all ages, whether you are 4 or 44, to engage in the service uh, while you watch today. So I invite you, if you haven't printed that out already, it came in an email on Thursday, so parents invite you to run to your computers uh, a moment, and you can print that out for your children uh, and for all of us uh, really to, to engage and be part of what we're doing this morning. And then we continue our series today on Proverbs. Uh, Pastor Heather introduced that a couple of weeks ago. Today's message is on the wisdom of words and how language uh, influences our faith and uh, how we can use language to build up uh, people around us. And so I invite you as we uh, 
uh, hear from her today. We're going to actually continue in our worship now with another song from Elvin and Donna and Chuck, Be Thou My Vision. It's really a song about wisdom that comes to us from God um, and inspires us with the vision he gives. I invite you to continue to worship as we sing together. Good morning. Two weeks ago, we kicked off our sermon series on the book of Proverbs, Wisdom to Live By. And we talked about what foolish behavior and what wise behavior looks like. Well, this week, we're going to talk about words. So let's go to God in prayer. God of wisdom, you are indeed the source of all wisdom, and you give us wisdom for our speech. So we ask that as we open your word, that you would open our hearts and our minds, that we might learn from you. Lord, affect our hearts, that we might gain wisdom to use our words wisely. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Proverbs is right in the middle of your Bible. So if you open your Bible 
right to the middle. You might find Psalms and Proverb, Proverbs is right after that. And this week, our scripture passage comes from Proverbs 12, and I've asked Benita to read for us. Good morning, Calvary. This morning, I will be reading from Proverbs chapter 12, verses 13 through 19. Evildoers are trapped by their sinful talk, and so the innocent escapes trouble. From the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands bring them reward. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show the annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. This has been the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Vanita. Brothers and sisters in Christ, words have power. Martin Luther said, if you want to change the world, then pick up your pen and write and change the world he did. Back in the 16th century, the great reformer Martin Luther, if you have a Bible that has been translated into your own language, Martin Luther had a little something to do with that. Words have power. They have the power to affect our circumstances, to change the trajectory of our future. Not guilty. You're fired. Safe. Out. I do. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I want a divorce. I'm so proud of you. I love you. Words have power. And when you factor in the element of sin, words can become a weapon. James 1, 6 says, the tongue is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. In our scripture passage, Solomon, one of the authors of the book of Proverbs, warns the Israelites about the ramifications of using our words foolishly. In Proverbs 12, 18, he says, the words of the reckless pierce like swords. They can cut, they can wound a person deep, deep beneath the surface, both, both in visible ways and, and in invisible ways, in lasting ways. Words wielded unwisely can become weapons, Solomon warns the Israelite people. And the wounding doesn't stop there. Proverbs tells us that weaponized words don't just harm the people who hurl them. They do damage to the person wielding the dagger as well. Verse 13 of chapter, um, of our, of chapter 12 says, evildoers are trapped by sinful talk. Weaponized words leave a residue on, in the mouth of, of the one speaking them. We know this to be true. We've been weaponizing our words since we began to speak. Mrs. Wells, our kindergarten teacher, used to uh, break up entanglements among five-year-olds, and she would ask them, now, are your words big bucket filling or bucket dumping? And it would teach children to discern between their words. Were they using their words for good or for harm? We've weaponized words and we've been the victims of other people's weaponized words. Your friends don't actually like you. They just pretend. You're lazy. 
You'll never be the man your brother is. I hate you. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not big enough. You're not tall enough, good enough. You're not man enough, wide enough, straight enough, Christian enough. You're not enough. Everyone has suffered the piercing pain of words. What words have wounded you? What scars do you carry? Well, thankfully, words do so much more than cause harm. Words used wisely bring healing and life to God's world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And how did he do it? He spoke. He used words. Words have the power to create. God said, let the waters teem with living creatures. And it was so, and God called it good. Words have the power to bless. God spoke these words to Abraham thousands of years ago. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. And he continues to bless his people through these words today. Words have the power to bless. Words have the power to encourage. Isaiah 43 says, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I've summoned you by name. You are mine. Words have the power to comfort. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Words have the power to affirm. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Words have the power to commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Words have the power to heal, be clean, Jesus says. And because God's words have the power to heal and bring life, so do ours. When we choose to use our words wisely, when we image God through our words, we participate in God's work of restoring the world. This isn't just a, a good idea. This is what's required as followers of Jesus. This is what the world needs in such a time as this. Our world needs healing words, words of life, especially right now in our world's circumstances of despair. Dietrich Bonhoeffer says that God has put his words in the mouth of men in order that it may be communicated to others. Bonhoeffer, a person who knows despair and oppression, Bonhoeffer said that Christians need other Christians to speak God's word to them again and again when they become uncertain and discouraged. God gives us his words of life and hope, and he gives them to us so that we can speak them to each other and to his world, so that we can be buoyed and encouraged and built up, encourage one another, build each other up. The Lord commands us in his living word. God speaks life into us that we may speak life into each other. And just as God's words have the power to bless and encourage and comfort and affirm and heal, so do ours. The Spirit speaks kindness and goodness and love to one another through each other. The tongue has the power to bring peace 
and affirmation and life and joy. I have a, a couple of examples of this, of, of this exactly happening. This is a card I received at my, um, my ordination seven and a half years ago. God equips you, Heather, and he leads you and he goes with you. And God wants your voice, your story, and your flair because Heather is an image bearer with a heart full of praise. Who says work boots can't be pretty? Be who God made you to be and serve with joy. One of my friends sent me this card. Words of truth, words of affirmation. This one, this is from one of you. You bless so many, including me. Words of encouragement spur one another on. This is a card from one of my kids. You've been a light in my darkness. I love you. Words of hope. We can bring life and hope and encouragement and affirmation and joy and healing with our words. Words are so powerful. They can affect us, but they can do even more. They can change our cosmic circumstances. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, he spoke these powerful words, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And when those powerful words were spoken, you are forgiven, was spoken over you and me as well, propelling us from death to life, from the end to the beginning of forever. Because of God's words of forgiveness and life, because of God's words of hope, we have life eternal. In a word, our circumstances were changed forever. When Mrs. Wells would navigate those circumstances with the five-year-olds, she wouldn't just ask them, is that bucket dumping or bucket filling? She would take it one step further and she would offer them a challenge. She would say, now, what are you gonna be? Are you gonna be a bucket dumper or a bucket filler? And God invites us into that challenge today too. What are you gonna be? Are you going to use your words to divide and to harm, to cause death and pain? Or are you gonna use your words for life and encouragement and affirmation and hope? God pours out his wisdom into his world and into you. He equips you and empowers you to bring life to his world. He gives you words of life and he gives you guidance and instruction in how to use words in such a way to bring hope to the world, to participate in God's restoration project through Jesus Christ by the power of his Holy Spirit. We get to be part of the solution in the world through our words. And as we participate in bringing life to the world, we bring life to ourselves as a gift to God. This is good news, good news indeed. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he does so through words. But Jesus came that you and I may have life and have it to the full. And words 
help bring life to the world. We have access to God's wise words of love and life and healing and hope. He pours out his blessing and his words on you today. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are a God of wisdom and a God of love and a God of life and a God of hope and that you shower us with your words of goodness. Forgive us for choosing to use our words to harm. Cleanse our lips, Lord. Wash our mouths, our tongues, our hearts. Give us hearts that desire to use our words to propel your world toward healing and life and encouragement. We thank you that you are a God of life and you continue to propel us toward life. We are grateful that today we get to begin again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So far in our sermon series on the book of Proverbs, Wisdom to Live By, we've looked at wise and foolish behavior, we've looked at words, and next week we're gonna look at the topic of justice. If you'd like to go deeper into the book of Proverbs, I invite you to visit our Calvary Facebook page. Someone has selected a verse of the day for every day. I've been finding those inspiring. You might consider reading a chapter of Proverbs every day corresponding with the date. There are men's and women's Bible studies on Proverbs happening on Thursday mornings. Dig in that you might maximize this adventure in the book of Proverbs that we are on together. Following the blessing on your screen, you will find some sermon reflection questions. Consider spending some time with those either on your own or, or discussing those with the people that you're worshiping with today. And now as you go, the Lord blesses you with words that he once blessed the Israelite people with thousands of years ago. Receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace.